In this video, we're going to learn how to use Google Drawing. Google Drawing is a great tool that can be used across the curriculum, across grade levels, to create uh, diagrams, digital posters, maps, floor plans, um, schematics, um, story maps, a variety of ways that you can use Google Drawing. So um, we start in our drive. If you're not in your drive, you can always access it from the top um, here under the black toolbar. Go to Drive and then go into Create and go into Drawing. Google Forms will bring up a uh, blank uh, canvas that you can use to start your drawing. The first thing you'll want to do is click on this untitled drawing and give it a name. And that name becomes also the name of the file later on when you go into your Google Drive if you need to locate it again. It'll be located um, under that name. So we're going to touch today on some of the aspects of uh, Google Drawing that'll give you all the basics that you need to know. One of the first things that you uh, may, may want to do is go into the background and create a, a background that works for you. You can leave it blank or transparent if you would like. It defaults to transparent. So um, maybe we'll start with a black background. So um, take a few moments, maybe pause the video at this point and get started with your own Google Drawing and then uh, restart the video and we'll go from there. Now that we have um, a, your um, Google Drawing ready to go, Let's look at inserting a, an image. I'm going to go under the Insert menu, select Image. Notice that you can upload an image. You can take a sna snapshot using your webcam or by URL or an image from your Google Drive. You can also, um, I do recommend that you use Chrome as a browser for this so you can drag an image in or you can choose to upload it from your computer. So I'm going to select one and bring it in. And as it uploads, it will put it directly onto the canvas of your drawing. When your image is uploaded, notice that you can drag it from place to place. You can enlarge it. You can also tilt it if you would, uh, need to have it at an angle. And as you move it around, notice that Google automatically brings these hashtags into place to help you to center it if you desire to do that. So pause the video again and take a moment to upload an image to your uh, practice drawing here so that we can continue on. Next, let's look at how to insert wor word art into your uh, drawing. So let's go in the insert tab, word art. And um, it at first prompts you to enter uh, some text in there. So we'll at, put the word bumblebee. And as it inserts this as well, you can drag it um, to wherever you would like to uh, have it. When you click off of it, you'll notice that the toolbar up here changes. As you click on it, you get more options. So one option is to change the fill of the word art. So I'm going to click onto this fill color and uh, let's make it yellow. You can also change the line that goes around the um, text if you would like to. Maybe we'll make that red. Notice that you can also change the weight of the line going around it if you need that more prominent. And if you want to select any kind of line dashing, you can as well. Over here, you can select a different font if you'd prefer to just change the font to it. You can also boldface or italicize it. Um, feel free if it's to resize it, put it at an angle, whatever you need to do. Pause the video now and practice uh, bringing some word art into your drawing. Okay, now we're going to learn how to insert text boxes into the drawing. So. I'm going to go again to the Insert menu, this time select Text Boxes, and you can put it anywhere because you can always move it, and um, type in what your desired text, press Enter to save, and um, in a moment your text box will, will come um, up. As you highlight it again, similar to the other function, if you click off, you'll see um, different functionality up here in your um, 
toolbar. I'm going to click on it again and then I get other options. So um, here again you can uh, do things like change the fill if you would like or the line color that's going around it again if you would like and, and so on. Here you can also select um, again to change your font and the size of your font. If you want to bold face it, you can do that and underline it and so on. You can also change the centering on it if you would like. So drag it to the location where you want. You can again um, move it around uh, to however it makes sense on the diagram. So um, pause for a little bit and get familiar with using a text box. Now let's look at several other insert options here. You can also um, insert lines. Notice as you hover over this, you have lines, arrows, and a, a variety of different types of lines. So as I'll select an arrow here and, and point to this wing as well. As you click on the arrow, you also can do the various things as we've done before, such as change the color, the weight, the type, and so on. What's nice and unique here are that you can also change the arrow heads to a variety of arrow heads uh, and a, very, a variety of endpoints. So those are really handy and nice to use. Let's continue on with the insert um, here a little bit and look at something else. Insert links can be nice. Uh, if you just want to put a link of something in, you just type it in. And uh, you can also put email addresses. So sometimes that's handy to do. Um, it's good to give to also require kids to uh, maybe cite their sources when they do the information, when they're gathering information for their drawings. So we've got that. Um, let's look also at uh, inserting shapes. As you hover over this, you'll see that um, Google provides a lot of different shapes that are available. So we'll just uh, make a simple one over here just to see what that looks like as well. And um, at this point, probably you're noticing a pattern. As you click on these various items, you can again change the color, uh, the weight, the out, outside line, and, and so on. So pause the video for a few moments and just uh, continue to familiarize yourself with these various um, types of objects that you can insert into your drawing. By now, you probably have the basics of using Google Drawing. Let's just look at a few uh, more things that you have available to you here. As you click on various objects, um, there are, is the ability to arrange them so that they can be layered on top of each other. Uh, so you might want to familiarize yourself with that. Um, another handy thing to know is that, especially if you're doing very detailed drawings such as uh, perhaps the floor plan for a school where you have to zoom in and, and label each uh, room number or something like that. You can actually zoom in and out using the view uh, tool here as well. Or you can use um, shift plus, shift minus, command plus, or command uh, minus to um, do that as well. So, and also look, th this is very handy. Under the edit menu, you can undo or redo if you make a mistake. And there are um, other functions there that are handy at times as well. And looking under the file menu, this is where there'll be some handy um, areas that you can use. One of the things you can do is download your drawing to PDF, to uh, various types of, of, of um, image file formats. JPEG is another common one that you may want to use. Um, you could also email collaborators, share this. You can go into the sharing tool and share this with collaborators. Um, how great would this be for your students as you are having them work together on prod projects that they're working on? Um, so at this point, um, continue on and get familiar with using the Google Drawing. I think you'll find a lot of uses for it personally as well as with your students. Enjoy.